God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus, and you're welcome once again to Jesus Sanctuary Ministries Hour, and it's a pleasure as always to come into your homes um, this evening, and um, we thank God for another wonderful day, another great day, another opportunity to hear from God this particular moment. And um, greetings, of course, from Pastor and um, from Jesus Sanctuary family. Praise the Lord. And uh, before we go into um, a session of praise and worship, I just want to uh, remind us of our Torino program. That will be the first um, program outside um, the UK for this year. And I expect a lot of us to be there because people have already signified their interest, not only in London or UK, but even from Africa to come for this program is going to be a great and a mighty program. And it's going to take place in October 28th, 29th, and 30th. That's Friday to Sunday, three-day program. And the theme is Waxing Stronger and Stronger. And it's taken from 2 Samuel chapter 2, and um, sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. That was where God was saying that the house of David was waxing stronger and stronger. And we must wax stronger and stronger in the mighty name of Jesus. A lot of things are going to happen in that particular program, I can assure you, because this is an, a program that is approved by God. And God will touch you, those of you who are seeking the fruit of the womb, those who have problems in their marriages, those who have problems in their families. This time around, God is going to arise and is going to do great things in your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Just as we know, there's a time when David was running away from Saul, but a time came when Saul died and David was elevated and he became king of Judah and king of Israel. And, you know, the house of David began to work stronger and stronger. So shall it be for those of you who will make out time to go for this program. And of course, the details were already there on the screen. So make sure that you make a date with it. And that last week is actually, um, I think that is a mid-term for the children, so you don't have any excuse. You can't say it's because of the children. It's the mid-term, so it was a wonderful, in fact, God just ordained that particular time to be put so that nobody will have excuse. And I can assure you that when you come back from that program, you will know that you have been in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. And come 30th of September, that is on Friday, this coming Friday, next tomorrow is our Passover night. And I believe it's very significant because it's not just the last Friday, it's equally the last day of this September. And after September, of course, we're getting into the last quarter of the year. And the theme for this particular Passover night is Pharaoh, let my people go. And it's taken from Exodus chapter 5 and verse 1. Every Pharaoh that has been holding us back, every hard taskmaster that has been holding us back from our blessing, from the ordination of God for our life, or come Friday, God will arise on our behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. Just as he did in the land of Egypt, and he showed his power. You know, sometimes God allows certain things to happen in our life. Why? Because he wants to show his power against the enemy. And at the end of the day, everyone will know that it's only God that could have done this. In your life on Friday, you will know that it's only God that could have done that, which you will do on this Passover night. So make sure that you're there. It's 9 a.m., sorry, 9 p.m. to 12 midnight, three hours of solid prayer. And I can assure you that you must go with your testimony in Jesus' name. So before we go further, I will invite the choir to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Be my 
mighty name of Jesus and our Lord God will always be lifted on high because there's no other God but our Jehovah God in the mighty name of Jesus. And um, today we are going to, for some time now, pastor has been talking about exchange of stars. And there are so many ways that people's stars are exchanged or people's stars do not shine. And uh, one of the things that we're going to face today, you may wonder how it has to do with it, but this is what the Spirit of God led me to teach today. And we're going to talk about true prosperity. Why are we talking about true prosperity? Because a lot of people have been shortchanged in their lives. They may, on the surface, they may think that the things are going well, but some of them have unwittingly sold their soul to the devil or sold their soul to the highest bidder. That we are blessed that we have financial means does not mean that we're in the will of God. The most important thing in the life of any person is our soul. Where are we going to end up? And a lot of the times, money has caused people to sell out their soul. And they think that, well, that there's a way they can turn everything around. At the last count, they'll realize that that's the end of it. That's why you find out a lot of people who, are, who started off well, maybe as pastors, as ministers, as even children of God, have ended up so badly. And you begin to wonder what actually went wrong. The enemy knows how to entice people into that which we may think there's nothing wrong. After all, money itself is not evil. What the Bible says is the problem is the love of money. We need money. The, the currency of the earth is money. Without money, we cannot buy or sell. It's a means of exchange. But when we now make it the be-all and the end-all, we end up losing out on the, most imp on, on the most important thing that God has for us, which is our salvation. And of course, when someone does not have their salvation, no matter how it seems that on the surface they are prosperous, actually, they are not prosperous. Actually, they are like they are on you know like on the highway to that to destruction. When um, Jesus Christ was addressing, I will not read it because of time. But when Jesus was addressing the church in Adesia in um, Revelation three, he said, "You feel you are rich. You feel that you know you have gold. You feel that everything is okay. But he said that you are poor, you are wretched, and you are blind." The Laodicean church was a church that was what well, lukewarm. But on the surface, they seem to be so rich. They seem to have a lot of money. In fact, maybe let us just even read it. I didn't write it down, but the, that, you know, since the scripture just came, now it's in the book of Revelation chapter 3. And Jesus was rebuking them. There was nothing good that Jesus Christ had to say about the church in Laodicea. Um, Pastor Andrew, please, you read um, Revelation 3 from 14. Revelation 3 from verse 14. Yes. And unto the angel of the church of the Laod Laodiceans, write, This is say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not thou that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you see here, it says that the church in Isaiah was saying, I am rich, I am increased with goods and have need of nothing. And Jesus was rebuking them and saying, Knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. So on the surface, somebody can seem as if to say that they are prospering. In fact, somebody can even admire them and think that, oh, this person is doing well, this person is blessed. But in the eyes of God, that person is poor, is naked, is wretched. Because what we are hearing now, prosperity of, is of God, of course. But what we are hearing now is not the true prosperity. Is the, is, is the prosperity of the world. After all, prosperity is not only Christians that God talked about prosperity. Everybody prospers, even those that don't even believe in God, even those who, who don't even, they are complete atheists. The rich people of the world, there are rich people in the world who are not what? Christians, who are not, who, who don't even have any time for the things of God. So people, any person can, people will prosper. But that doesn't mean that that prosperity is of God. They will prosper and when they die, if they die without Jesus Christ, where are they going to? To hellfire. And this is a time where people need to actually sit down and begin to take stock of their lives. 
we keep on saying that we're in the end times, and actually we are in the end times. And everything that we are talking about now has to do with us being conscious of the fact that Jesus can actually come at any time. And we should not pursue the things which will take us away from the salvation, the path of salvation, or from the way of God. But when we understand what is true prosperity, we will not be fooled. Some of people have, like I said, unwittingly entered into covenant with the devil without realizing it because of what? The desire for money. A lot of the times when you hear about prosperity teaching, it's not about Jesus Christ, it's not about our soul. It's more or less like a business transaction. If you pay, if you sow this amount of money, you will get this. If you sow this amount of money, you will get that. If you sow this amount of money, you will get this. It's just like somebody going to the shop and you have maybe 20 pounds in your hand and then you go into the shop and they have a dress there for 20 pounds. What they are saying is that if you, if you, give, if you give us 20 pounds, you can take the dress. That is it because you will bring the dress, give it to the cashier, and the cashier will not give it back to you until you pay your 20 pounds. So that is what a lot of people are doing. Give this amount of money and you will get this. That is not how it is. That is not true prosperity. God knows where we have the greatest need. Of course, it's good to sow, but that does not mean that you are going to get what the person who is telling you. Of course, you will get a harvest, but nobody can determine the type of harvest. You can sow money and God may determine, oh, where you need a greater harvest is maybe in this area, maybe in your health, maybe in your marriage, maybe in this way or that way. So nobody can come out and say, if you sow this, you'll get hundredfold of this money and all that kind of a thing. So we're not arguing against sowing. What we're arguing is the way it is being presented as if to say that it is a business transaction. And once it's presented like that, then I can assure you that whoever is preaching that message is not of God. But when we go along the line of true prosperity, we will see a difference. One of the ways we will see which one is true prosperity is found in the book of 3 John and verse 2, because it's only one chapter. 3 John and verse 2. 3 John verse 2. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So even God is saying that he wishes above all things that we must what? Prosper and be in health. But the caveat there says, even as thy soul prospereth. So God's desire is that we will prosper in relation to the prosperity of our soul. Not just prosper for the sake of prospering. Because there's a prosperity that you have, it can destroy you. And when it destroys that person, that is that person's star being what? Destroyed. That is that person's star being exchanged. That is that person's star not shining. Because at the beginning, like I said, it may seem that you have gained something. But at the end, that very prosperity can end up what? Destroying. God's desire is that we should prosper and be in health. But he wants us to prosper and be in health in relationship to the prosperity of our soul. The most important thing is how we are growing in the Lord. How strong we are in the Lord. The prosperity of our soul. That is the most important thing. Because it is our soul that will end up either in heaven or in hell. On this planet Earth, everything we will acquire, whether it is money, whether it is houses, whether it is fame, whatever it is that we acquire, we are going to leave it here. No one is taking any pounds or dollars or naira or whatever to heaven. No one is carrying any house from, from Earth to heaven. No one is carrying any degrees. It is all these things are just to make life more comfortable for us here. And then equally to when you're financially prosperous, to help what? In the gospel and to help the poor and to help the needy. But that is where it ends. So if it becomes the be all and end all, if that becomes the focus point of any person who is a child of God, then there's a problem somewhere. Just like as a parent, there are things you will not give your child, not because it is bad, but at that particular age, you know that that child cannot handle it. If you give a child... Uh, maybe, maybe a child of seven years, 200 pounds. What is that child going to use that 200 pounds to do? Most likely that child will use that 200 pounds to maybe buy sweets and chewing gum and all sorts of rubbish that will end up decaying their teeth or messing them up. You will not give it, but if you give 200 pounds to maybe your child that is going to university, you know that that child will use that 200 pounds for their feeding or for, to buy their books or one thing or the other. So it's not that God does not want to bless us or prosper us, but he wants to prosper us in accordance to the level of the prosperity of our soul. Because what is more important to him is that we do what? We enter heaven. It is better for somebody to enter heaven, they were poor here, enter heaven, than for somebody to be rich and at the same time the person enters into hell. If you remember the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus was poor on this earth and the rich man was enjoying all his, all his wealth. But when they died, Lazarus went to um, Abraham's booth in paradise while the rich man ended up in hell. 
So what did it profit him? Profit him nothing. Are we saying that we should not prosper? Like I still go back. God wants us to prosper, but he wants that prosperity to be in accordance with the growth of our soul. Praise the Lord. Um, please, can you go to Deuteronomy 8, 11 to 14? In Deuteronomy 8, 11 to 14, it's just buttressing what I just said now about the fact that if our soul has not prospered to a certain level, we may end up, that, that prosperity may end up destroying our lives. Yes, please. Deuteronomy 8, from verse 11. Yes. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his status, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and had food, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Praise the Lord. So you Amen. find out that God was warning, if you read it even down, God was even telling them that, so that a time will not come and you begin to look at what you have and you feel it is by my, by my own strength, by my own wisdom. He said that not when you begin to prosper, you begin to have increase in cattle, increase in sheep, you build houses, then you will now forget your heart will be lifted up. And it happens all the time, even in the nations of the world. When the nations were still growing, some of the nations when they were growing, they always remembered God. Before they would do anything, they would pray. Every laws that they made were based on the Bible. Now, the nations have become prosperous. They have forgotten God. They have thrown the Bible out of their system. And laws are being made that are contrary to the standard of the word of God. And then when we see all the carnage that is happening in the world today, we begin to wonder where it's coming from. It is that love of money and that we feel that we have gotten it and we can do whatever we want to do. After all, we have money. The Bible says that money can be a defense. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes 7. And people have begun to use that money as what? A defense for themselves. Well, let me tell you that that money cannot be a defense. There's a time that will come that money will do what? Fail. But the issue I'm trying to say is that we need to be careful that we don't get caught up in this buying and selling that is being done. So, and so this amount, so that amount. Everything has a particular, oh, so this amount, this specific amount for what? For certain things. Because sometimes you may not realize the covenant that the person who is telling you to sow is, it has, has, and once you sow, problem can come. People have sown and sown and sown and sown, and they have nothing to show for it. Sometimes I ask myself, I say, if you feel that people will sow and they will get hundredfold, why don't you take all the money out of your own account and sow it too, so that you can get the money? But you see all these things happening and people being hoodwinked. There's a time I was watching a program, and it was very distressing in my spirit because the people were being fooled, and they didn't realize they were being fooled. And the reason why they didn't re realize they were being fooled because spiritually they had not grown to the level where they should be. So anybody can come and begin to do whatever, tell them whatever they want to do. And because too, people have a desire for money. There's that love and desire for money. Anything you tell them, as far as the return is a lot of money, they will do it. This man was talking on air and he was talking about a lady he told to sew, I don't know how much he told to sew into his hand. Was it, whether it was 77 pounds or dollars or whatever. And he now told her that in three days' time, or the one week time, I can't remember the exact length of time, but it was a short time, she should go to her bank by one minute to 9 a.m., because the bank opens by 9, that she should go there by one minute so that she'll be at the door, that once the bank opens, she should enter, go to her account, and clear every money there, and leave. And she did what he said and got to her account, and she saw thousands and thousands of dollars in her statement. And she quickly redrew all the money, and she took off. And the man was saying after all that it does not concern her where the money came from. And people were clapping, and the, the person who invited him was a so-called great man of God. And I was like, is Jesus Christ, is he, is he a robber? Is he a thief? It's only a thief that will take money and run. God cannot prosper you, and you have to take the money and run away. What they did was divination and enchantment to bring money into their account. And somebody has lost out. But how do they do those things? They do it because they have sold their soul to the devil. And the same person who went to collect that money to has unwittingly entered into a covenant as well. And that money that she took, I can bet you, that money 
will disappear one way or the other. Because Satan is, bring your head, I'll bring my own. So one way or the other, either the virus will come, other sickness will come and clear that money. So some people are sowing money in places where you don't even know that the person has a covenant. How can somebody be saying that kind of a thing? And people are believing. Because if somebody has grown spiritually, you will know that it is false. Just some few weeks ago, the same so-called prophet, they were exposing him that all the prophecies he was giving was the same, the same prophecy that a medium, somebody who has a familiar spirit, was giving exactly every single thing that he just was reading it word for word. So you find out from day one, he was never. And yet, so-called ministries have been calling him left, right, and center because once people hear money, they go crazy. And they feel, okay, let me take opportunity. Let me so I will get this. It's the law of money. Satan is using that to take people away from the, the, the main thing of the kingdom. What is really, really true? What is really, really the, the purpose? And it's making people to look at what is not important. Like I said, money is good, and it's good to sow. We sow, the church sows. My brother here, he sows. I say everybody sows. But you sow because God has led you to sow. There's a time when we, when we came here in 2006, I was asking God, praying to God, that I don't want to stay in a rented place. I want us to get our own place. That he showed me a place before we even came. He now told me th that you're going to sow. And I told him how much. He said, he would tell me how much, that I will know how much later. I said, where will I sow? Because there was a ministry I was sowing into every month. I thought it was that. Me. He said, no, not there. I will show you where you sow. And where he told me to sow, nothing would have in my mind ever crossed my mind that I would sow there. I said, okay. And when they brought out the, showed up the amount, he said, you will sow double. You will sow. When I called the lady that wanted to sow, he said, no, 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 that this is the amount. I said, no, I want to sow. This is the amount I want to sow. It was almost double. She, she thought maybe I didn't understand. I said no, because that was what God told me I should sow. And I sold that money for a year. That, the last check that I gave, that very particular month, that was when the house underneath us went up for sale. And we eventually bought that. Not only that, God did, gave us a big financial breakthrough. We were able to buy our own house and everything. Then the church had not decided, so it was not, yeah, it was not church money, it was God just blessed us personally with some of the assets that we had. And that was it. it and it was just for that, but it was God that told me, I said, this is what you're going to do, and showed me where I will go, what I will do. It wasn't even what they were asking for. He said, this is what you're going to sow. And I saw the result because it is God that told me. Some of us, any, our, our thinking is just, Okay, this person said I should sow. Okay, let me sow. Maybe I will get this. I will get that. And people have become what? Frustrated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, can you just go to um, Matthew 16, 26? Matthew 16, 26. Yes. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That is what Jesus Christ said. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? It still goes back to the issue of the soul, the prosperity of the soul, being more important and allowing God to prosper us in relation to. There are things that God may have shown us, a lot of money, a lot of wealth, a lot of things. It may not be forthcoming simply because it is for the future at a time when we are able to handle it. When Joseph had the dream about his brothers, his father and his mother buying down to him. That was, you know, showing that he was going to be in a big position. That was the prosperity. He was going to be in a big position where they would bow down to him. But God did not bring that to him immediately. God took him through training. He went through a lot of training onto his soul, onto his person, became spiritually mature. That even at his position as a prime minister, in Egypt, second only to Pharaoh, he didn't get to his head. He didn't, the Bible doesn't say he oppressed any person or took advantage of any person. Even when his brothers came, he didn't say, yes, this is the opportunity I have now to, to deal with them and show them. He had grown to a level that, you know, vengeance, you know, taking vengeance against his brothers was not the issue. God said that vengeance is why we pray our prayers and let God decide to take control. 
That is, our job is to pray our prayer. You pray as God leads you. Then God, he didn't physically decide to, I will deal with these people, I will do this, I will do that. Because he had, his soul had matured. He had prospered so much that his position and the opportunity he had to deal with his brothers, he didn't take it. That is what God wants. Because he doesn't want, like we read in Deuteronomy 8, he doesn't want that prosperity to destroy us. He wants us to be able to be in a position to handle finances or to handle material wealth or to handle a big position, maybe in the office, without it getting to our heads or without it making us to now forget God. There are people who are prospered and they stop coming to church, but at the time they were almost sleeping in the church. Then all of a sudden, things go well. God prospers them in their health. They, maybe they were sick, they become well, or God prospers them in their place of work and they get some wonderful promotion, or maybe God prospers them in their businesses and they do well. Then all of a sudden, oh, they cannot, you know, come to church because of this or because of that. They become, begin to come once a week or they become, begin to come once a month. They have excuses. Everybody has an excuse. Even the pastor has an excuse. Sometimes on Sunday morning, you don't want to get up from your bed. I can, I can tell you that. But you still get up and come and do what? Do the work of God. So don't think that everybody doesn't have it. Everybody, if everybody wants to sit down at home, including the pastor, they will sit down at home. But you find out how the Satan has used that prosperity to what? Lure the person away. Then a time comes when the person thinks that nothing can happen and something happens. And that is there. And the person comes crashing down. I pray that we will not allow our focus to be first of all on financial prosperity. Let our focus be on the prosperity as our, as our soul prospers. God will definitely do what? Prosper us. Like a good father, he won't want us to be destroyed by his blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 6.33. <clears throat> Matthew 6.33. Yes. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, seek ye first what? The, the kingdom of God. That is the first, that's the most important. Most of the time, when people are preaching about prosperity or one thing or the other, people's direction are being, attention has been moved to what? Towards things. The most important thing is what? Seeking the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God first. Then, before you begin to talk about what? Other things. Seek the prosperity of your soul first before you begin to talk about other forms of what? Prosperity. That is the command of God. And God is wiser than all of us. He knows. He knows that if our soul is not prosperous and we allow, and he allows us to become prosperous beyond the, our ability to hold that prosperity, he knows that that thing can eventually do what? Destroy. And that's why he doesn't want it. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And um, the same Matthew 6, 24. At Matthew 6, 24. Yes. No man can serve two masters. <coughs> Excuse me. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Praise the Lord. So you find out that Jesus Christ was saying that, and he was talking to the children of God. So it is, it is, it is, it is, it is among, it is among it is in the household of God that you find out as, that instead of God being the be all and, e on, and, and be all in our lives, our focus, there are now two focuses, God and what? And mammon, that is money. And now people are being pushed towards the area of what? Of money. It's not about money, it's about God. When we see God first, all these other things, money, this, that, they will be what? Added, because when we see the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God will give us the direction on what to do. God will bless us. After all, it's God, God's desire, like we read in 3 John, that is, his desire is that above all things that we do what? We prosper. We will not go there because of time, because I'm being told that I have some means before we open the line. When God created the world, when the world was, you know, without, without form and everything, the first thing he did was to create light. Light is synonymous with who? Jesus Christ. The most important thing for the earth at that time was not Adam and Eve. It was not um, the trees and the fruits and the and the herbs of the field or the bees. The most important thing for the earth at that time was what? Was light. Then after light, God began to bring what? Order into creation. He now separated the firmaments in the heaven from 
the one that from the one below the, the, the you know the earth and called it heaven. He now separated the seas. He gathered the waters to one side and the dry land appeared. He began to bring what order. Then after that, that's when he now began to bring what trees and plants and animals and the birds of the sky. And then he now created man. So before he began to prosper the earth, he first of all made sure that that before he began to bless the earth, he made. He first of all made sure that the earth was what? Conducive to be able to do what? Receive that blessing. He first of all created light. So the first thing we need in our lives is Jesus Christ. The next thing is to bring order into our lives. To prosper, so our soul will prosper with the word of God and with prayer and everything. Then all these other blessings will naturally come into place into our lives. And they will not do what? They will not overcome us. They will not... They will not become a snare unto us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will just, we will just quote this final scripture before we open the lines. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9. And then we will open. Pink. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9. Yes. I read. Yes. First Timothy 6 9. Yes. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. So you see here, Timothy was saying, he said, But they that will be rich fall into what? Temptation and what? A snare. A lot of people have fallen into snares, into traps, all in the quest to do what? For money. Even in the church, even in the world, there are a lot of things people have entered into and they don't even know. Covenants they have entered in. Things that they have vowed that they didn't realize that it was going to be what? A snare to their soul. Just because of what? The lust and the desire for money. And because they are promised, oh, you just give this, or oh, mortgage your house, do this one, do that one, and you do what? You will get a hundred food, you will get money. And people have done that and they have fallen into what? Into that snare. My prayer is that we will not allow ourselves to be deceived. That we will not allow ourselves to allow the love of money to take us away from the very, very, the most important thing, which is our relationship with God, our salvation, and the salvation of our souls. God bless you. Hello, um, hello, Patricia from Manchester. Good evening. Uh, good evening, my sister. First of all, can I just thank you for... I was in, when I called in about my visa issue, you prayed for me. Yes. And now the visa has been granted. So oh, yes. can I just thank you and for the intercession and also let me go reflect God for that table. We thank God. We thank God for that. Right. So there's another thing is in your teaching today has been very wonderful about God and blessing you and responsibility. Mm. If God, can I just add that if God didn't discipline you enough mm. and blesses you, mm. that blessing will destroy you because you mismanage it. Yes. So those he loves, he chastises. Yes. So when his chastisement comes, we should accept it in faith and use it and accept it as God's training mm. before he now lifts us up. Yes. As you said, so that like Joseph, there will be no vengeance because you know it's from God. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that contribution, Patricia, and thank you for Thank God for the answers to that prayer. Like my sister said, th there's a reason why God does what he does. And sometimes our eyes are too much on the prosperity of the world that we get carried away and we want to follow it the way the world follows it. But that one will bring destruction. I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Hello, is that David or da Davita? Hello, Davita from Birmingham. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello. Good evening. Ah, uh, good evening. Yes, my sister. Yeah, good evening, um, Pastor Mrs. Yes. Um, thank you so much for the good work you are doing, you and your family. I mean, I mm. love to watch you and your husband. You know, you really, really opened our eyes, you know, to see. Because before I started watching you, I didn't know all these things going on, but... Um, we just thank God for your lives. You really, really, you've shown us at least the light, you know. Amen. And may God bless you and your your family. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, um, past, yeah, Pastor, I just want you to pray for me. I mean, I had a dream. Mm. 
um, our fruit, my family's fruit, were in a basket, and somebody just covered them. Mm. Mm. Your family's fruits? Yeah, the fruits, the fruits that belong to us. Someone mm. just covered all the fruits. I know. No, I will pray for you. Anyone that is after your blessing, anyone that wants to cover your blessing, any covering, any satanic covering over your blessings, I command those coverings to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. And any hand that wants to steal your blessing, let those hands wither and dry in the mighty name of Jesus. That Amen. fruit, that blessing that belongs to your family, no one will take it away from you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Hello, Emma from Catford. Yes. Yeah, go Emma from Catford. Yes, go ahead, my brother. Yeah. Um, um, I came here almost six, almost six months ago from Italy, and mm -hmm. I've been hearing you listening to your program, even including my wife. The first time Pastor came to Perugia, my wife was there. Okay. Work as usher, and I've been working in the house for God. I told her I'm here to work and to pray and to worship Him. Mm -hmm. So the devil came attack. No, maybe he made me to eat something, which it is disturbing my, my, my heart. My heart, I want to stay today. My head will be so hot. My heart will be also very, very hot. Mm -hmm. And in my throat, I've gone to Israel. They say to be by Friday. I pray God, I want to be healed. I want to walk in the vineyard of God. God has shown that he blessed me here. The devil has come to attack. I don't want to see this problem. I pray for me so that it to be okay for me. They must be okay for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you, Father. I lift up before you your son, Emma. Lord God, Jehovah, you said that healing is the children's bread. Father, Lord God, Jehovah, you said that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. Every attack of the enemy, every attack of infirmity against your son, we use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to bind that spirit of infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, Jehovah, that from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, that your healing power will flow in his life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every medication, every drug he will take, Lord God, Father, they will work well, in the mighty name of Jesus. As he goes to hospital, Lord God, use the doctors to bring healing into his body. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hello, um, Newton from London. Yes, I'm asking for prayers. Someone has sent me. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear you well. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. Someone has sent me exes and bad vibes and very bad luck. I'm asking the sister to pray for me and ask her to ask God and Jesus to remove them from me and to send them back from whence they came. Are you born again, my brother? If I'm born again, well, I'm, con I'm continually on the same path. I believe in God and Jesus Christ. No, the, well, the most important thing is for you to give your life to Christ. Like I said, the prosperity yes. of our soul is most important. Light, Jesus Christ, is more important. It's the first before every other thing. And my prayer for you is, first of all, for you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and as you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that God will show forth his power in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus, and you will know that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that Jesus Christ, there is nothing he cannot do. That is my prayer for you today, that you will come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, and as you do so, you will see a change in your life, in Jesus' name. Thank you very Amen. Much. Thank you. No problem. Amen. God bless you. So, like, while, well, while we're waiting for, there is um, a scripture that I would have wanted to read. That